Previously, we introduced sorting and listed various different sorting algorithms. We delved deeper into bubble sort and realized why it is an impractical algorithm to use in the real world today. In this video, we will introduce an algorithm that is slightly more efficient than the bubble sort. The selection sort. Welcome to Code Station. Let's say that we are asked to sort 8 people in the order of their height. You can swap the position of 2 people, but you can't keep a person outside of a line permanently. First, let's see what their heights are. Tom, who is just a baby, is 69cm tall, then Tara is 135cm, Bob is 140cm, and Albert is 150cm. Christina is 160cm tall, and Jasmine is 175 centimeters. Steve is close, 180 centimeter tall, and Tamara is the tallest, 200 centimeters tall. These people could have very well been represented as an array of these heights. The array would have looked like this, the zeroth index for the first person, that is Steve's position, and seventh index for Christina's position. Essentially, our task at hand is to sort this array. We could use bubble sort to bubble up the tallest person towards the end, but Tamara, and in fact everyone else, wouldn't appreciate the number of position swaps that they would be required to do. Let's use selection sort instead. So let's begin. This red zone marks our search space, the people among which we try to find the shortest person. Steve is at position zero. He will be assigned as the current shortest person as we have not looked any further. In the first iteration, we compared Tara's height to that of the current shortest person, that is Steve. Tara is shorter, so she will be assigned as the current shortest person. In the second and the third iterations, comparisons yield that Tara is still the shortest, as Albert and Tamara are both taller. In the fourth iteration, the height comparison suggests that Tom is the current shortest. In the 5th, 6th and the 7th iterations, Tom still holds as the shortest person. In 7 iterations, our scan is complete. We found the shortest person, Tom. The next step is to swap the shortest person's position with the current position that we are looking at, that is swap Steve and Tom. This way. The shortest person reaches at the beginning of the group. Now let's begin at position 1, Tara. She will be assigned as the current shortest person. Note how our red search space has excluded position 0. This is because we already know that position 0 has the shortest person. Now we are ready to do our iterations and comparisons. At iteration 1, is Albert shorter than Tara? No. Similarly, iteration 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, none of the others are shorter than Tara. Thus, no swap is necessary. Tara belongs to position 1. Moving on, the search space is from position 2 to position 7. We do 5 iterations to find shortest person in our search space, Bob. We swap Bob and Albert. Bob reaches position 2 as he is the third shortest person. Starting at position 3, we find Albert to be the shortest in 4 iterations. We move Albert to position 3, swapping with Tamara. At position 4, we conduct 3 iterations to find the next shortest person, Christina. Then, at position 5, we do two iterations. Jasmine, whose height is 175 centimeters, is the shortest and gets placed in position 5. Finally, at position 6, we just need one iteration to find that Steve belongs to position 6 and Tamara belongs to position 7. This way, we have sorted 8 people according to their height. Summarizing the positions and the iterations involved, we did 7 iterations at 0th position, 6 iterations at 1st position, 5 iterations at 2nd, and so on. Generically, with n equals to 8, we did a n minus 1 iteration at 0th position, n minus 2 at 1st position, n minus 3 at 2nd, and so on. 
If we look at the increasing position values, this series all converts to n minus position minus 1. Also, notice how there are n minus 1 positions that we looked at. Using these informations, a selection sort algorithm can be generically expressed as this. Given an array of size n, we loop through n minus 1 positions, starting at 0 and ending at n minus 2. The swap position is what we represented earlier as the current shortest person's position. This is the position where the current position needs to make a swap with. Then we have the iteration loop where we compare the element at the swap position with the iteration position. This loop is run n minus position minus 1 times as we have established earlier. It is worth mentioning here that the swap operation is done in the outer loop, that is the position loop only. Thus, there are only n-1 swaps done. Similarly, we have kept this algorithm generic with no implementation of compare function. An ascending comparator, for example, would look like this. A descending comparator would look like this, the difference being the change of a greater than operation to a less than operation. If we were to compare various attributes of the elements like we saw in the introduction to sorting video, our comparator would look like this. Here, height is the primary sorting criteria and age is the secondary sorting criteria. The asymptotical time complexity of selection sort is exactly the same as bubble sort, that is, order of n square. How do we get this? Well, using the same approach as we did in our bubble sort video the dots representing the number of iterations and they assuming a shape of a right angle triangle. I will not repeat these steps as you could easily check out the bubble sort video. Well, if the asymptotical time complexity of selection and bubble sort are the same, why did we state that selection sort was a bit more efficient? It is because of lesser number of swap operations. In selection sort, we do a maximum of n-1 swaps for the outer loop only. In bubble sort, the swap operation may be done for all the iterations, that is, n times n minus 1 divided by 2 swaps. Therefore, selection sort is more efficient. The performance might be comparable or worse than insertion sort. The performance on an insertion sort algorithm depends on the initial unsorted array. For an array that is almost sorted, selection sort is much less efficient than an insertion sort. We will understand this in much more detail in the insertion sort video. Like we know, a n square time complexity is impractical in the real world. A Google search for the word Apple, for example, results in almost 5 billion records. If they were using selection sort, they would have to do 2.5 times 10 to the power 19 iterations. That would have taken a lot of time, in years maybe, even with the best of processors. Thus, selection sort is rarely used. The question remains, why did we go through this algorithm if it is so useless? Well, this algorithm is a great and intuitive way to sort a small array. Just like the example of sorting people according to their heights that we saw earlier, it's a common approach to sort things by hand. In computers, this algorithm, just like bubble sort algorithm, does not require much RAM capacity. The swap operation needs an additional local variable, and therefore its spatial complexity is in order of 1. Thus, this sorting technique is great for small embedded devices like a TV remote or a calculator. In the upcoming videos, we'll look into other sorting algorithms that are more efficient. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions, please comment and I'll get back to them. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on any of the contents. Thank you for watching.